I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Call this meeting to order. Noting all board members are here, um, including Superintendent Belsheim, High School Principal Sue Davis, and Elementary <coughs> Principal Ryan Koenigs, and also Haley, our, our, our uh, student school board member Haley Smith is here. Um, yeah. So, uh, that being said, looking for a motion for Number three to approve the agenda. So moved. Motion by Member Schroeder. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Member Smith. Uh, any discussion on that? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. All right. Uh, more, uh, item number four, refer referendum projects update, Gary Lovitz, and I don't see him here. No, um, with us rescheduling meeting for tonight, Gary was not able to attend the meeting. Um, is there any chance that Paul, is Paul? Paul's not here. Okay. okay. Not here all right. So you have all received um, a packet of information, and this is, um, this is in regards to um, the, the new quotes on um, bids that you um, requested for that um, that roofing, um, the alternative um, that that we've been discussing. And <clears throat> so you can see that um, that he has the complete report for you, the site construction. So he's got updates here, um, site reconstruction. Uh, tra uh, the track paving, two lifts, and athletic um, surfacing 40 days after the final lift of the payment, excuse me, pavement, will be done in the spring of 2024. It may require some class five dressing de uh, depending on the condition. Um, and then you can see the football field lighting again, and he you know, continues to address the Osprey nest and um i think we all are in agreement that we're just going to wait and see what happens with our osprey family um and whether we would need to create a new nesting area for them or let them be where they are in our lighting program um the exterior wall repairs um began in july and completed their work um early so that's all done the gym skylight replacements um were all completed on september 22nd the uh, Southwest roofing um, that was completed in December of 2023. So that was that last section of um, the classroom hallways three and four. And then um, here's where we're addressing alter alternate number two for the replacement of the roof over the choir area was not accepted due to the budget. The original alternate pricing for this area was $121,777, and it didn't include the new insulation. Um, I, 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 our district did get proposals from McDowell and Granite City Roofing to re-roof this area with the lowest bid being McDowell with a GAF four-ply built-up roof and all new insulation for $129,790. We would recommend the board to approve McDowell to perform this re-roof work. And that would be coming straight out of the contingency funds, correct? That would come out of con <clears throat> contingency funds. That is it's correct. And then you can see the HVAC um, entries, that miscellaneous project. Um, do you want me to go through all those or are you fine with us? Um, oh, we okay. have the sheet in front of us. If we yep. got any questions, we can read it. All right. Do you what? I said we can get a hold of Gary. We can get a hold of Gary if anybody has any questions on them and what's going on. Yep. Well, and the thing is, is that this is on the agenda to actually um, approve tonight. Please tell me it's there. Just the roughing. The rough was you're talking about, right? Okay. Yep. So number eleven is oh. where you would be taking action on the referendum 
the referendum contract, the additional roof section. Yeah. And so just it, the roof. Yes, just, yeah, just that roof, roof section. Yeah, I didn't know if you meant yeah. the roof. And then of course, um, looking at um, you know that that we do have the two different um, bids that have come in, and that um, he's recommending that we um, that we go with the um, the McDowell roof, the alternate roof product. And you can see that on your your second page, with the um, the different <coughs> quotes, bids, the amount that came in, and we did not have to go out um, to brand new bidding and start the whole process over because of this being already being addressed the first time um, around with the with the bond projects. Superintendent Fellowship, I'm going to recommend we do this because it's leaking now, correct? Yeah. Yes. And the other part of it is that um, this is part of our, our building, and it we honestly did not believe that section. It was slated for 2025, you know, soon to be replaced because that was the new addition onto the school. And so that, um, you know, that roof isn't as old as, as the building. And But because of the leaking, um, Definitely, we should be making those repairs because when you have items that are over $100,000, um, that's going to be hard to come up with during a regular budget year. And since it's part of our building referendum, the contingency dollars are there to pay for this now. And now would be the, um, the best time, in my opinion, also to get the work done. And McDowell would be able to um, get that work done soon for us. That went fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions or comments, discussion on this as of right now? Okay. All right. We'll move on to agenda item five, sixth grade par participation in girls softball. Is there a presentation on this or? I don't know. Is there anyone here to um, address softball? We're all here. Oh, gee, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Stand up, say who you are, and we'll, we'll, we'll listen sorry, to what you have to say. Hi, I'm Stephanie. I am head coach of the high school um, varsity softball team. Pam Nichols, assistant JV coach. Diana Schultz, junior high. Um, basically, I don't know if you guys were handed up. Uh, background form of information about what the proposal was that was sent to all yeah. the board that was sent. okay yeah. i just wanted to make sure before. yes they have they received it basically we want to extend an opportunity to the sixth grade class the girls um and as an option to play softball and move up if they want to on the junior high, junior high level um starting the season and um every season here on out we're going to be pulling eighth grade up so we have a full jv team and varsity team every season and we're not struggling to meet numbers um it just really has dependent been dependent upon class size and interest and i really think this will help fulfill the side of the softball side of things for seasons to come if we start sooner. Yes, they have summer softball, but like I said, this creates more opportunity for girls in a core sport that has become a core sport for us. I know Kathy, she was on a championship team and it's very important that, you know, we kind of bring those bring those things back from the state and we really want to do that. And allowing those girls to play JV, it prepares them more for varsity. More playing time. And it really helps. Yeah, it really helps them because if you take a freshman and just throw them into a varsity map, it's a lot different than playing J junior high going right to varsity. And we had a JV team a few years back, and those girls really succeeded when they got to the varsity level. So they had that experience. Makes a difference to develop their skills. Um, just like our, our eighth graders now started with Lori and I when they were sixth graders and we've just seen a pretty dynamic, um, team happen. They're very competitive. Last year we had a season that was 12, one and one. 
Um, so they're just an outstanding team and just having that extra time with them to help develop them. And yes, both Lori and I contribute to our summer programs as well, but just getting them ready for the competition that actually happens in school ball versus summer um, is different. So yes, we would just like to have this opportunity to keep continuing to grow our softball program to see where it should be what we've had in the past as full teams. So. Okay. Um, oh, oh, sit down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you very much. Um, the the question I know that's been that was brought to everybody's attention, and I'm guessing it has been discussed, is the fact that this does overlap or not overlap, but it, it's also in contention with um, community at volleyball. And you know, how do how do the girls feel about that whole situation and what 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 their what their thoughts are on it? And I, my eighth graders or the eighth graders that now are on the team now, what that same situation was also um, for them. So the girls that were participating in both softball and the volleyball program, we let them out of softball practice early. They had a break. Um, there was a meal provided, a big lunch so that they could go have supper because they're starting their day here at school and they're ending their day at eight o'clock at night. And so we, we do understand that. And so as softball coaches, we accommodate that as well. So on those nights that there's volleyball, um, they're getting out of practice early so that they can have a little bit of wind down time before they start the next thing. And those, those girls that those eighth graders thrived then as well. And so it's the practices for volleyball games, for volleyball are all on the weekends, so that doesn't conflict with anything in the softball program. Just always fear burnout. Yes. Right. <clears throat> so as with all kids, you know, we find our interests at an early age, too, and not that we want to take away from any other sport or any activity whatsoever, but they're at the age, too, to develop their interests, and providing this opportunity allows them to make a selection as well. Like, would they rather play softball? Do we have more softball girls or volleyball? I know we're going to like that. <laughs> but I mean, that's the reality of all schools. I come from a small school too. And although I played multiple sports every season, it's just one of those choices that you, you know, I was more of a softball person than a track person, but I still did both. So. Okay. So Go ahead. Okay. My, my understanding is, but we have low numbers at the varsity and JV, so it's trickling down to the sixth grade. Right. Why do you think we might have those low numbers up there? We had low numbers last year, too. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, because I think sometimes they get to pick track, and so that takes away those sixth graders because track gets those sixth graders. So then they buy into that program without exploring. Another reason is, um, from my observations, because I, I know quite a bit of the kids, quite a few of the kids. Um, we have one of our grades right now, our current ninth graders, we have one athlete that is on the softball team. Um, their amount of girls in that grade is way low. So when you have a small class, what a small class and a, and half, only a third of those are girls, you might only have 11 or 12 in that class that are girls, and we have maybe two of them that are participating, one in track, a couple in track, and one in softball. If the numbers aren't there to begin with, the bodies, then that is going to contribute to who's coming out for a sport. It wasn't like when we were in school where everybody did a sport. You, you went out for it. Kids now are pulling back, and they're not participating in as many things. It's just, it has been a trend. They're, they're just not. So my only concern is that that triple down effect is putting a lot of pressure on those six straight girls because they're the only athletes right now involved with two sports in an evening. Is that correct? Down for a couple of days because I'm not sure the as that practice plan for the when they just do wondering if there could be some kind of you know collaboration between How long and absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. So it's one one. They could be in track right now. Six graders have the option to do track. Yep. And only one, one six graders in track. 
And like I said, it's, it's an option. It's an opera. It's just an opportunity to present itself. Like if the girls, they want to go out for it, of course, we want them to explore their interests and what they want to pursue, especially whenever they get to the more com the competitive level. Um, and that's all that is. It's not a like, yep, we're pulling up eighth grade. We've got to pull up sixth grades. It's just, you know, as we develop the teams and the girls, we just want to extend that always. So, Diana, you said track, they're pulling up sixth grade, or that's an yeah, option? That's, that's always an been option for boys yeah. and girls. Yeah. Yeah. That's always been an option. Yep. Yep. And only one kiddo is in track. Or Can you tell me at your current numbers? We have 20, including the eighth graders for uh, high school, JV and varsity. So we have a full ninth grade and full nine um, eighth graders. And then um, between 10th grade through 12th grade, we have 10. So 11, I'm sorry. Nine through 12. Yeah. Sorry. Nine so you have 12. 20 high school. Yes, yeah. 20 total is high school. And okay. then yeah. I Diana, have 11. you have 11. Okay. Good. Anybody else have any questions? I believe it would be 41 total students and um, athletes in the softball program. Maybe that would be six through 12. Correct. 41. So we have enough. How does that come with? Correct. They just said 31. How do, how do no, you know it's 41? 40? 20 lower sixth graders. If you, if you add, if you the, sixth add the sixth graders, graders up. Yeah. yeah, that would be including yep. the sixth graders who, who would like to move up. So we have enough for the district to participate competitively right now. Absolutely. And that's what we want to maintain. But for this season, we have enough. I think what Corey's asking is without the sixth graders, yes. do we have enough? Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Moving on to item number six, open forum. How many people are here for open forum? Three. Four. Four? I think Clark oh. has three back there. Okay. Um, all right. That being said, uh, uh, we'll start. And if you can limit it to five minutes, that would be great um, to... Uh, yourself and uh, yeah we'll start we'll go with uh, Clark Auger. I had I had not planned I was on the fence um, so I wanted to note um, after sitting in on the 4 30 to six o'clock meeting I was hoping to hear some robust discussion about um, proposals in the personnel department which had been brought to the March 11th meeting. Um, and so that was brought up and that had nine points on it. I'm chiefly speaking about those first two points. That's the, the middle level um, students and the one section third grade, one section fifth grade proposal. It was characterized um, that we as a staff have been told about or received information about that and that is true to a limited extent the, that's basically what i know thus far is that uh, it's been proposed to do one section of third grade one section of fifth grade and have one full-time certified teacher working with the two groups in some way um, what you've received in an email or video whatever format was something we're unaware of and would appreciate the full understanding of um, and would like to hear it discussed because there are merits perhaps to the case that I would like to hear. There are detractions that you'll be hearing about this evening. Um, I wanted to note a couple of them. Um, one of them uh, is that past practice. So a few years ago, the school district did a similar thing we took a small class size coming through, reduced it to one section. Um, sitting with Mrs. Nichols one day, the two of us had to draw a complicated map to see what happened to staff and to students over the course of the next three years as teachers were displaced out of one grade level to the next, 
teachers looped and left their specialty um, or experience area into a different one. Um, and the students themselves just had had a bit of a rough time. I think that's been the perception by uh, from staff with with that kind of uh, arrangement. And so I'm concerned and I think other staff are that this is going to have a trickle down effect to each year. Other teachers, if they have to be displaced, are going to be leaving that area in which they're most competent, most suited. Um, so I would like to hear things um, addressed in that way a little bit. Um, the class sizes themselves, last year there's, a, there's an annual class size study that's produced and in the state of Minnesota of their broad sample size, this isn't every school, the largest third grade class there was in the state was 32. If we don't have any students move in or out, we would be 30. If two students come in, do we want to be the largest third grade class in the next year after just passing a referendum, boasting of small class sizes? Fifth grade, subsequently, largest one last year, 35. We would be proposing to put 33 students. If two comes in, do we want to be the largest class size of fifth graders in the state of Minnesota? Um, thirdly, anecdotally and data wise, these particular groups, are they the best students to do this with? I'm concerned on two fronts. One, we have staff who have noted, I've never spent so much time with the principal working on student behaviors as I have with my such and such grade this year. And that's relating to coming uh, one of these groups. And that's, this is a teacher who's been around longer than me. Um, secondly, other staff have said, oh, this second grade group is going to be put into one section. There are a lot of behavior concerns there, or there are other issues that, that as a staff member, they spoke to with some understanding and expertise. Um, thirdly, well, thirdly, I lost count of what number I'm on, but anyhow, data-wise, our second graders coming into third grade have about a 30% reading proficiency. Our fourth graders going into the fifth grade group, did I say it wrong? Second graders going into third, 30% reading proficiency. Fourth graders going into fifth grade, about a 24% reading proficiency. Math is higher. District-wide, that's a norm. 53% of second graders moving into grade three are proficient. 45% of fourth graders moving into five are proficient. Um, reading fluency numbers, which is that one minute, how many words can you read correctly? Our second graders coming into third is at 16% proficient and our fourth moving into fifth is 48%. So those numbers are you know, lower than that. If you just look at 69% or 70% as a low baseline, that's not, they're not there. Um, so I think if anything to ask for, I would love to hear some robust discussion on those two er areas tonight and speak to what, what, it, what was sent to you in email video form, because we as a staff knew very little, maybe you, you know much more. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next. Anyone else? Okay. State your name, please. Nice and loud. Hi, my name is Liara. I am here today to talk about the budget cuts. I believe that every teacher and staff member is valuable to us kids and others. If you choose to cut any of them, us students will, will suffer. Our learning will not be as exciting or great and our needs will not be taken care of as quickly for our academic, social, and emotional needs. Please think long and hard about your decisions and how it affects us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay. Uh, Peter Emerson, I'm looking at the uh, non renewal numbers here. That's got to be about as great a number as we've ever had, I would say. And uh, I'm not sure why that continues to happen. Uh, if there aren't uh, licensed teachers in the state that we can hire, but it seems like it happens year after year. And then we get this non renewal stuff again. These people. I think they're doing a good job. They're getting out renewed, but except for the two that are probably out of here. Uh, but I don't understand why it keeps happening. Are there not enough teachers in the state? Or you can go ahead and elaborate on that, Gabby. It's, the non renewal isn't our choice at all to, to do that's a process know, that's required by statute. Certified in this area. It says right. right on here. Yeah. Right. We need to find people that are certified. In the area exactly Dave. and that's that's why the state requires us to non-renew even though you know these these people are doing a fantastic job and, and we want to keep them around um but we're forced by law to non-renew them because they're you know out of field I or or the, yes and so so yes um it, it's a situation and we're not alone of not being able to find licensed people in some of these um in some of these areas and all of the areas that are listed here are where we didn't have any applicants for for those um, those in some cases we did not have any applicants for the for the positions but we had really good people who wanted to be teaching in our school and they were willing to be um, to be licensed um, as a tier one person a tier two person um, level for from the Pelsby um, or you know they wanted to be teaching here and and we needed um, a certain area. Well, they would they would they would teach out of field um, to do that for us on our behalf. And so you know, we we think I I thought exactly the same thing when I was typing up the agenda and writing all these the, the letters, getting those ready. Um, you're right. This is the largest number that that I remember um, with our non renewals and our out of fields. And so you know, and again, we keep looking for the licensed people. Um, and, and we hope that that we can have um, have them, but the people that aren't licensed are doing a really excellent job for us and for we our kids. Reach out to colleges and things like that. We do. A wide variety of colleges to try to find people. We do. Kathy, yes. are our postings? Do they go on um, the St. Cloud State Ed post? Yep. They yes, they, they are required to yep. um, for the state of Minnesota, and um, and we've been there's a new um, informational piece that. For um, some of them that require 15 days, we have to resubmit it to EdPost three times. And then there are other ones that we have to post for 60 days to see if a licensed person will come forward. And so those 60 day ones, we have to repost, I believe it's the, you know, the eight times because EdPost recycles every five days is what we've been told. Every five days we have to send out a new posting. I mean, granted, it's the same posting, but we have to do our due diligence of getting it back out there um, onto the onto that and, service. And we already did that reposting previously to get it back up to the top, you know. And so, you know, we're trying. And in the elementary, when you have an elementary position that's open, you know, if you're a licensed elementary teacher, you can teach. You know, when you look at how many people they could replace, but in the high school, it's way different. You know. We only need two math teachers, and you have to have a math license to do that position. So, I mean, it's it's very narrow. So, in the high school, it's really getting difficult getting people that are completely licensed in the program. And so, like right now, we have um, some people that have a four-year degree in a related field, and some of them are joining some um, teacher programs so that they can become fully licensed. It's going to be... Uh even more so next year, but I've been reading that some people are going to take over some classes because they're licensed in that area, but that's not really their their area. I've, I've heard some discussion about that. It, but yes, you're, I think I know what you're what you're um, oh. speaking of, and they are licensed teachers for teaching some of those other classes. Right. Yes. Yep. Be out of their field. I mean, like. No, they would be licensed to actually teach it. There's only one that I can think of that will have one hour of the day 
of an OFP. So they just have to have that one hour of the day is a non-renewal, but the rest of the time is a regular licensed position. I know some of you guys, Mr. Smith, you have to have a license, right? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we expect that of our teachers? Yep, and yep, we do yep. expect that when we hire, we try to find right. licensed individuals. Just sometimes they're not available. Right. And That's what's been happening. Honestly, and the state a lot is getting sloppy on it too. Well, a lot of organizations now are going to years of experience too without. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that's really tough for the people who have the education and license. You know, so mm -hmm. it's tough. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dave. All right. Go ahead. State your name. Please. Okay. okay. So Speak Amy loud. Um, I got a few things. So um, one of the first things I'd like to hang on with is you all know I have a second and a fourth grader. So both of my kids will be going into third and fifth grade next year. My concern as a parent is I want to know what procedures are going to be put in place. I know behaviors happen in these grades. As a parent, it makes me very nervous that there's going to be 30 kids in this class. And as admin board, I want to know what you're going to do to persuade me that that is going to be the best, best place for my children educationally. Because I know what struggles they have now in second and fourth grade. And I am worried about what it's going to look like for third and fifth grade. 30 kids, this group is a lot. And I don't know how they're going to get anything done. I like to see the behaviors increasing. Thinking that everybody's in that same room, all the friends are now together. To me, it just does not seem like a good idea. And it makes me nervous. So that is my biggest concern right now with these budget, recu budget cuts, is what's going to happen with my kids next year. Um, the second thing is I know that we are going to be cutting some of our music time. Do we know what teacher is going to be staying and teaching the K through 12? So it's going to be one teacher for both, all grades, correct? Do we know what teacher is going to be taking that over? And who my elementary students will be having? If you'd like to answer it, you're more than welcome to. Well, we have seniority. And so we have a non-tenured teacher and we have a senior uh, tenured teacher. So you're telling me that Dr. Torno will be teaching K through 12. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing that makes me really nervous. My daughter not my joint choir, and I told her she didn't have to. I do not feel that that's a good fit for, for elementary students. I'm going to put that out there right now. And that makes me nervous also. Um, one other thing is in regards to sports and the cuts, I know we talked about cutting games. I just don't feel that it's fair that cuts do not happen across the board for all sports. If we can't cut, cut games, can we, can we cut somewhere else? And we talked about admissions and stuff being increased, and we know that that's how the revenue is for um, you know, basketball, wrestling, football. And I'm curious to know where does the revenue come for like softball and baseball, where we don't have admissions? How do we pay for the umps and stuff? I mean, where does that come from? I mean, is there enough fundraising? Is there enough, you know, fees that cover all that? So I'm just kind of curious to know where that comes from. Is it borrowed from other places, or is it just money that we have to? Did you want to elaborate on that or not? It's assumed by the district. And um, there, there are, there have been discussions. You know, some schools have um, the way their fields are um, built. They can, you know, they can have a gated entrance, so they can charge admissions. Here at our school, we, we never have charged admissions for the, the, you know, spring sports. And you know, to try to create, um, you know, stadiums with, you know, that the actual entrances um, would cost. A lot, and so it's not real feasible. But but yes, it ends up, um, you know, for that equity of kids being able to be in all different activities. That's that's one one sport that we have to assume those extra costs. The only place we have a revenue there is just strictly activity fees. 
That is correct. That's all I have at the minute. Thank you. Or concessions. It. No discussions. All right. Any other open? Any other people here for open forum? All right, we'll move on to report. Oh, Excuse me, Mr. Chair. There was an open forum um, letter that came through our emails today. Yep. And um, I don't see the individual here, so um, would it be um, acceptable for me to read this? If you want to read it, you can. Otherwise, I can also. Okay. Um, go ahead, Chair Nathan. Chair Keynes, go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Dear school board, I can't even begin to understand the amount of pressure you are all feeling with the decisions you are being asked to make. I am writing this letter in response to, be, to it being phrased that all suggestions are welcome. My intention is to give my opinion based on my understanding on how the law is written and what I think best practices should be to create the best learning environment for our students. Based on my research and conversations I have had with other teachers, this is what I have come to understand about the tiered teaching licenses. Um, cannot earn seniority tenure. Uh, tier one needs a bachelor's degree in emphasis area. Tier two, bachelor's master's degree in emphasis area and working to compete, complete a program on pedagogy. The pedagogy on how to teach or a bachelor's degree in education but need to pass tests. Can earn seniority tenure. Tier three, a bachelor's degree in emphasis area and competed pet pedagogy program tier four a tier three teacher with a bunch of other hoops to jump through a seasoned teacher <clears throat> since tiers one and two cannot move up in seniority and more importantly do not have a background in pedagogy i believe best practice would be to keep as many tier three teachers as possible even if a tier two teacher has been here longer the more tier three teachers we have teaching our students the better Prior to this tier system, tier three is what we picture as your average teacher. This, it is my belief that if all, if all we would need to do is create a strong system of tier three teachers across a core content area is to move a couple of teachers around, this is the opinion option we should take. Additionally, I think a tier three or four teacher teaching outside of their emphasis area and out of field teacher should take precedence over a tier one or two. I would even like to paraphrase our elementary principal, Ryan, when he was hyping up some of his staff. He was telling them that no matter what the topic, they have gone to school to learn how to teach. They know how the mind works and how it processes information. With that knowledge, they can apply it to any curriculum, to any subject. This is a practice we have used in the past, mostly for isolated classes. But if a job is being eliminated and there would be an opportunity for them elsewhere in the building, they should have the opportunity to accept it before being eliminated. In, my sh in short, my suggestions boil down to do not cut your tier three or four staff, even if non-tenured or out of field, cut your tier one or tier, tier two staff first. Thank you for hearing me out and considering my suggestions. Kelsey R. Kehoe. Okay. Anything else? I will. I will. State um, your name, please. Yep, Ings Lane. Um, in addition to everything that's said, just one other question that we had, um, just as staff in talking, the last board meeting, I think it was like March 11th, there was talk of the 39 page document that Kathleen Brooke went through. and just kind of saying that it's long and there's a lot to it. Our just thoughts is, will you guys be going through that as well? Um, I know there was talk that you know, it's long and it's tedious, but for us that are kind of looking at where money can come from, just kind of wanting to make sure that our board also has gone through things and has looked at all of those lines to see if there's any other ways to trim anything off there. So. Just to add that to everything we've already got. Thank you, Amy. Go ahead. Um, I'm Rachel Schilling. I am speaking as a staff member and a parent. <coughs> to the recent uh, suggestion of cutting out addition, 
I just wanted to make sure that the board was aware of what that would put onto the staff members in the office. We currently have a incredible um, administrator. Um, she is not as experienced as our previous administrator. Um, and I think adding the current jobs that I have um, onto her caseload may be a little overwhelming. Um, I currently deal with behaviors. I currently deal with um, the attendance. And adding that to the current caseload of the administration um, is going to be incredibly overwhelming. A lot of the jobs um, are getting uh, backlogged because of um, the current caseload. Adding more to that, especially for somebody who is not as experienced um, in the area, it may be a little too much. I feel like things could possibly um, get put by the wayside that need to be taken care of. Um, our um, uh, principal, our superintendent, do an incredible job with what they're going to try on. Um, I try to help them as much as I can. I was part of my job as the, the uh, administrator was to take on some of the things for them. Um, and I just feel like putting that all onto one person is way too much. So I, I just don't think that that thought of cutting this position was well thought out because I don't think you realize the reality of what it's going to do on one person. Um, and as a parent, I'm very concerned about the um, cutting of the teaching stuff. I have two elementary students, one in particular who I would consider to be high needs. He has ADHD and um, continues to run from class. He'll sprint at the drop of the hat. When you have a child like that in the class, the teacher's attention needs to be on, you're talking about like 35 children possibly in a class, and you have one that's constantly running out the door. It, it's just not feasible. Um, I had an incident with him recently. He's not allowed to use the main bathrooms because uh, he climbs and he's very dangerous. Um, recently, that was overlooked um, because he put on stuff and he was let um, to use the bathroom on his own mission. So we're talking about more incidences like this occurring with other people, well, other people's kids, because we're understaffed. I, I understand we need to cut money, but we need to do it safely so that our children are taken care of. And we as parents can feel safe with leaving our children in your care. Thank you. Thank you. I, I guess I got one. Uh, All right, please state your name. Jeremy Johnson. Uh, I'm just wondering why it is that we need to cut money. Is it because of funding that's coming from the state? Is there stuff that we can do to, as parents, that we don't need to put nothing else on these teachers? They do a lot already, way more than I ever could. But what can we do as parents to make sure that we can get the funding to make sure these teachers and these activities maintain the money they need. Is it, do we have to fill out special forms? Do we have to, what? I, I guess I really don't understand why we're supposed to find teachers or the school board or the school, I, I don't understand it. I'm just dumb old country boy. But um, why, like, what they, we need to do, we're supposed to hire these top tier teachers, but we're coming to other teachers. So, what, I guess I don't understand what else has parents have to do. I'd just like to know that. I don't know if I can get that answer here or not, but yeah. Thank you. Did you want to answer that, Kathy, or let it like? I I can make a general statement and and that That's would fine. be the the reason that it was so important that our taxpayers um, passed the levy referendum was because we were running out of money. And um, we cannot, um, I just, I am so grateful that our taxpayers have helped with that. 
And I do truly, truly believe that it's this year and what we do next year that will straighten everything out. And what happened was the money didn't come soon enough because even with the referendum being um, November of 22, that money couldn't be used even though it was tax payable in 23. The school district wasn't able to use those funds until school year, fiscal year 24. And so we ended up um, uh, close to what's called SOD, um, statutory operating debt. Um, and um, statutory operating debt is not the whole picture of a school district. We still had, um, with our audit, we still had a positive um, a balance for a, for a district. They use certain funds that they actually um, study and pull out to determine, you know, how um, how 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 um, how how safe the district is with their finances. And so, with that. Um, we needed to turn turn that around, and I'll be addressing that a little bit more with with my report. But so truthfully, um, it is um, we were so close, and that's why it was so extremely important that that the past uh, passing of the levy. And again, um, our our community is so proud, and it ends up being it ends up being all the families in our school district because you know we do not have a whole lot of industry. And so again, it's it's families um, coming together because they want to make sure that Ogilvy Public Schools stay strong. And that whole idea of strong community, strong schools, that's going to live on forever um, in, in our district. And for that, I'm, I'm extremely thankful. As far as forms that you can fill out, we'll go back to that educational benefits forms. Even if people don't think they qualify if they would please fill those out because they just might. And the other thing that people might not be aware of is if something happens in your family where um, a job is lost or, or something or somebody is laid off, then when that change happens in the finances in your own family, you can, you can fill out the paperwork at that time. So it's not just you know at the beginning of the year, it can be any time that there are financial changes in your families. And again, that money um, does it, it's not only the, the Title I programming, but it's also um, other funds, other grants that come into our school district that bring in revenue. And that's it's very much appreciated again. So could we put like those papers, like at a wrestling meet or a basketball meet and have parents fill them out or just have them sitting there so that parents that don't know if these things are available they could do it? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Just we, Perfect. Sorry. We usually do this at open house, and, and that's why with some of those other budget um, ideas of, of revenue, we thought, you know, if people would be able to save money on their Chromebook leases, and if they'd be able to save money on the, um, on the activity fees, that that might be a way of enticing people to please fill out the paperwork. All right, we need to, we need to move along here. Um, we're going to move on to item number seven, reports. We'll start with principals. We'll start with uh, high school principal Sue Davis, please. Okay. So, getting kind of be a busy time of year for us. So, we have our end of the quarter report, which um, with our PBIS, we do that every quarter. This quarter, we're focusing on students passing all of their classes. So, should be, you know, a majority of course, of the students will be able to attend, but we're gonna go over to the movie theater on Wednesday. And so the students will be able to go over there, they get to pick a movie, go see a movie. And so that's a good reward. And I know that that's one of the favorites of the students. Um, also, we had our student academic showcase. It was very well attended. We um, only had around 30 students in the high school that did not come, the rest of them did. And so that's really good. And the atmosphere is just really amazing for that, um, <coughs> excuse me, the the teachers and the parents and the families, they're just always really excited to, to see the different activities that the students are doing. Um, the students, of course, are very proud of what they've done and the teachers really like it because they get to see the students actually um, re-explain what they did, what the purpose of the lesson was and, um, and show up. 
show their parents all the great and their families all of the great things that they do. So it's it's a super great um, addition to our school. So I really like that we do that. Um, we also had a speaker come in and talk to the K-12 staff or students and staff. And so we had Terrence Talley come in and he had a message where it's basically, you know, you you choose other students, you choose other people, classmates, and you let them know that you got their back, that you're there for them. And so it's kind of um, being there for each other, but he, he had about an hour long um, talk with each of the kids and it was really good. It was really inspiring. So I know a lot of the kids afterwards, um, he also had this thing where he did dad hugs, you know, it's like those really big hugs and stuff. And I know that after each of the sessions with the high school, I don't know about the elementary, but with the, with the high school, I mean, when kids left the gym, they were, you know, hugging each other and showing support for each other. Um, so he was really good speaker. <coughs> also with the students, our winter sports and musical have wrapped up. And of course, we're starting our spring sports. You know, they're doing their practice. And, um, you know, when we thought we were going to have spring for the entire season, then of course we get a snowstorm. So it could be a little delay with things being wet, but I think we got some warm weather coming. So hopefully that'll dry out fast. And then with our staff, we had our QCOMP meeting. So we have a couple of those meetings each year, uh, preparing for our next year's QCOMP um, program and how it's gonna look. So we worked on that. And then we also had a crisis safety meeting. With that, we look at all of our different departments and we look at any safety concerns that we have. One thing that we mentioned that we want to do next year is when we have our evacuation next year, we actually want to try and go through the reunification um, uh, procedure because we have never done that yet. And so we really need to make sure that we kind of go through that reunification, see where we could see some, some errors, and then, of course, make corrections. Um, we also have the final round of evaluations for the high school. Or be it done. I think I got one teacher left. And then, um, and then of course, this is the time of year I'm the district assessment coordinator, if you're not aware of that. And so with that, this is testing season for us. So we have the ACT on April 9th for juniors. And then we have the MCAs and the MTAS, and those will be um, coming up the end of April. So there's a lot of stuff to prepare the staff to make sure that they have their modules um, completed so that they're trained on how to monitor for testing, you know, what's allowed, what isn't allowed, and then also um, preparing our students and, you know, just even, you know, preparing a schedule as to when that's going to be done. So there's a lot of work with that right now. Um, April's a super busy month with that. And then um, we had our junior high softball and our um, counselor interviews. So we're working on that with the staff. And then other things is that we applied for a PBIS mini grant and that was for $500. And so those are some of the things that we use for some of the student rewards for paying for transportation to going to the movie and um, or sometimes we do malts, treats, things like that. So we applied for that and we just got notification that we got that. So we'll be getting that uh, check for that pretty soon. And then um, Kathy, are you going to talk about that? Okay, Kathy's going to talk about the next grant we got. So I'll let that one go. But then also, you know, just several IEP and, and special education meetings. You know, we like to have a lot of those meetings now to get ready for the next year, finish out this year, get ready for the next year. So just lots of meetings. What? My core classes. Uh, okay, I've been a little busy. I haven't finished the schedule, but so far there are no core classes in seventh hour. So. Thank you. Yes. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> I know. I know. That's excellent. Yeah. Congratulations. I like that. That's great. I know. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or discussion for My children also came home from the Terrence. Uh, Callie. Presenta yeah. presentation and uh, yeah, they uh, they actually brought it home and talked about it and I'm like, okay, well, I must have actually done something if uh, they yeah. they said something about it. So that's good. Yep, they did a nice job. So, Ryan, yeah, I want to start by <clears throat> celebrating some of the people that uh, do an awesome job working with our our students. So our first person we need to recognize is Deanna Small. Um, she does a great job treating everyone with respect, whether it's students walking through the door 
answering the phone. Um, she treats everybody with respect. She's doing an outstanding job of um, running the school. So um, we, we need to celebrate her. Our next person is Mary Benson. So Mary Benson is um, supports us with custodial and van driver as well. Um, Mary is a go-getter. She is constantly around the building doing everything that, that needs to be done. Mary does. Um, for example, the other day she was cleaning the windows out at the end of hallway one and she noticed that the basketballs the kids play with out at recess were flat. Um, so she inflated all the balls and threw away all the bad ones that um, deflated. So uh, need to, we need to celebrate her. Um, next person is Carl Boudreau. Um, I don't know if everybody knows this, but Carl has donated many, many hours working with our kids in, in the tech club. Um, and some of the students were able to show off their final product at the showcase. Um, so we really need to thank him for all of the hours that he's put in and the support that he gave our students and donating his time. Um, our final person is Mr. Jacobson um, with relationships. Uh, this actually came from another one of our staff members, uh, Matt Erickson and the custodians, and they say he helps out any way he can. He's there assisting kids at lunch um, and small things here and there, and, and he does a great job with relationships. So I'd like to celebrate those four people tonight. Um, moving on to the Student Academic Showcase, uh, we have a lot of positive comments from that. Uh, it's a great event for our kids. Um, they were able to show the, their work, and um, this year we were able to have a lot more conversations. Um, our kids were able to have a lot more conversations with more people. Um, so I think the format change was, was successful. Um, we're going to send out another uh, feedback survey here probably next week to parents and um, just get their feedback and, and staff members as well and see what we can do to continue improving upon our, our academic showcase. PBIS rewards this month, our focus was on the time lining up from the lunchroom to when they go back to class. Um, oftentimes this is an area where we see a lot of behaviors um, and the classes were competing to see um, which, which grade could do that the best during the month of March. Um, and we had some PBIS members donate pizzas for our winning uh, grade level. So third grade was our winning grade level here. Um, and then our preschool four was also a winning grade level. So today, third grade got to eat their pizza. And then next week, preschool four will get to eat their pizza. Today was the end of the third quarter. Um, we always have a celebration where we honor our students of the quarter. Um, we do that down in the auditorium and we talk about what's our next focus for the next quarter. Um, we also had the American Heart Association um, fundraising challenge um, in the past. They called it Jump Rope for Heart. Um, this year, our students raised more than $6,000. Um, which is almost our record. I think we we're just shy of our, our record. Um, and our, our leading, um, or the person who raised the most money, Hayden Jenkins there, raised over $1,000 for the American Heart Association. So that was really impressive. And he got to pie, Mr. Shu said today on stage. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Coming up, our MCA assessments um, in the elementary, April 17th and 18th. We will have the third grade through sixth grade reading, um, April 24th and 25th. We have third grade through sixth grade math. And then May 1st, we have um, fifth grade science. And this information can be found on our school website under the assessment tab. Our kindergarten open house was scheduled for Tuesday, but we had to cancel that due to the snow day. Um, so it, got, it is now going to be on April 4th. So that is Thursday next week. Um, I want to thank Deanna for updating that flyer and getting it out right away as soon as we had the date. <coughs> and finally, our kids attended the musical on March 20th. Um, the students loved the performance, and we want to thank the actors, the stage crews, the director, everyone who put in all, a lot of time and hard work towards it. Thank you, Ryan.
move on to Superintendent Belsheim. <coughs> <laughs> um, the first thing that I'd like to address is that um, after the last meeting, um, I received an email from a person that had been watching our presentation live stream. And um, in that, that um, response from her, um, she, she said that um, she felt I was really condescending. Um, to our board members in relation to our um, school budget. And I want to apologize to our school board members because I would never do that intentionally. Um, I know that sometimes my words get twisted around a bit. And what, what is, um, has always been um, the biggest struggle for me is that school financing is so complicated. It is not like our checkbooks and our own family um, home budgets where you know what your bank balance is and you know if you have to tighten up the, you know, tighten up around the belt or if you can go out and spend more money. And so um, I do want you all to know um, that the board members have all been um, given uh, both the revenues budget and the, um, and the expenses budget. So they have the same document that um, that Brooke um, Stolz and I went through line item by line item. And I didn't count the, the lines exactly, but I, I want you to understand the magnitude of our school budgets. And so there are over 3,000 lines in that the documents that they have, um, have received. And um, it took Brooke and me um, probably two weeks um, you know, not you know, not full days, but trying to get through each of those with the discussion that was needed. So we have, um, we are trying to fine tune what we do in our school district um, with with our budget. So um, my my apology to you. I never intended to um, make you feel like um, you weren't you know intelligent enough to be able to take a look at our budget. So you now have all of those um, numbers. And, um, and it is all color coded. And so um, please let us know if you need some more direction with that. All right, so again, my apology. The other thing that I uh, alluded to um, a little bit earlier is um, the, the status of the district. We did not go into um, SOD, statutory operating debt, but we were very close. Um, if you're negative 2.5 by that study of the accounts or the funds that the state uses, then um, you're basically considered in the red. Make we, sure you make sure you. I'm sorry to interrupt, but make sure you say percent. Percent. Yes, thank you. Percent. And we were at 2.46. We were also um, 2.15 um, back in 2018-19. And that's where we had to go through this same process of a whole lot of reduction in order to get back on, on, the, on the right page again. And so we've been here before and we've done it. And we, as you heard tonight, just look at all the awesome programs that, um, that, we, that we've been able to continue to um, provide for our kids. Um, it's been just um, excellent. Um, with with what they've done and what you've done is um, with the supporting of the kids, the showcase, the Terrence tally, um, you know, just everything. So um, I also wanted to um, to share with the um, with with that is that the state then sends a district to the superintendent and says, "What are you going to do as a district to turn that around?" And so. Um, so a response was sent um, through my office, and I, you know, addressed each of the areas. I addressed that the taxpayers had um, had already approved a tax levy, and that it's going to really um, help our district, and we're going to be able to turn this around. And then um, I did end with, mm -hmm. "We are a small rural school district where our educational system is the vital hub of the community. We take great lion pride in the care and education being provided to our students." and their families, and then please feel free to contact me. Um, and so I, we did get the confirmation letter back from MDE, and it was just good afternoon, Kathy. We have reviewed your submission, and thank you for your thoughtful response. Please keep us informed if there are any significant changes that may affect your reversal 
of this negative trend. If you have any questions, please um, do not hesitate um, to get in touch. And that's from, from MDE. So that part um, is has been approved. Also, one of the, the big things that our district has to do is what's called the SAM registration. The SAM registration is something that's done annually to make sure that all of our information is up to date in the system that, that garners, covers all of our federal grants. So the federal grant for the electric bus, the federal grant for Title I, the federal grant for REAP as a small school district receiving more funds. And if that isn't done, <clears throat> then we're, um, we're, we would be not getting those funds. So just want you to know that that process has also been completed. And so it will um, help with our, our district. It's, um, it's good through um, like June of next, next, um, next year. So it's about a year, um, year in advance. Um, but we will want the, the new superintendent to go in and needs to make sure that we have that new person registered as the superintendent of the school district. So that has been done. The next thing that I'd like to share with you is a thank you. And this thank, thank you um, is addressed to Ogilvy Public Schools. Thank you for the beautiful um, floral arrangement. Also for everything before and after the service, your thoughtfulness is greatly appreciated. And this came from the Gary Baker family to our district. Then one thing that you, I know that you're aware that um, our AD applied for a, uh, for a scholarship or a grant basically from a Minnesota State High School League. So just so that you know, we did receive that grant and it was $896. And this grant is based on the free and reduced student population. So this is another way of receiving extra funding for our kids. This money goes right directly back into our programs um, for, um, for our athletes and students that are in activities. The next thing, this letter um, surprised me because I didn't know it was coming. It came from Minnesota Association Environmental Education. And it says, Ogilvy Public Schools, please find and close a substitute stipend check in the amount of $352.16 for Laura Chris's attendance at the 2024 Annual School Forest Conference by the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. The Minnesota Association for Environmental Education works in partnership with the Minnesota DNR to provide these substitute teacher stipends for school forest events. And then it goes on to talk a little bit more, but um, so this organization to have um, staff go to conferences they paid for the substitute um, for the district so it wasn't any extra cost and um, just absolutely admirable and very much appreciated. And then um, <clears throat> Mrs. Davis, Mr. Koenig, Koenigs and I worked on a grant and this grant is through Kanabic County and it's um, through, through um, the extra funds that were left over of the ARP, which we call the ESSER funds, um, but American Rescue Plan is what the ARP stands for. And so um, we had to make an application and we could ask for a, um, we're asking for a um, $10,000 limit on the, actual, um, on the actual application. And we needed to find something that would help our school kids, our school staff, and our school families. And so through this, what we did is, um, and we get kudos for the name. Our project title is in, entitled Roar to Get in the Door. And the Roar helps with our PBIS and you know, with our respect, ownership, achievement, and relationships. And it's on attendance. So this grant, um, it's a program that's going to be evaluated by using attendance numbers at the conclusion of the 24-25 school year. The program is going to hopefully be sustainable also in the future years. And so we talked about research shows that kids need to be here at school and that that's going to be the best way for us to, um, to educate 
to have them feel like they are well-rounded um, students with great mental health and great achievements and great um, friendships, those relationships. And so we also then, of course, had to give lots of rationale. But so um, the, the actual plan is to be able to give things to kids, give things to staff, give things to families that we can't buy with school funds. And so it's going to be certificates and pins and um, gift cards and treats and choices of things out of um, baskets. And, um, you know, again, the gift cards for, for families for their support and having their kids be here at school. And so at the meeting, um, Ogilvy smaller than, um, than, than Morris schools. And so Ogilvy, our, our grant was for $7,500. Um, Mora had their grant for 10000 and they also see that need for attendance. So wouldn't you know, they also wrote a grant for attendance to help get our kids here in our schools. So bottom line, the committee that was um, discussing our grant proposals doubled it. We have $15,000. So it is awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of my report, unless you have any questions about anything. Okay. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. All right. Moving on to board members. Any board members have anything to say? Anything to report on? Of course, I always have at least something. Um, <laughs> Um, nothing, not much has been said about it. I will say that uh, I also attended the musical, as did Member Smith. Musical was uh, very good. Oh, man, what an amazing performance uh, by the students and everybody involved with that. It was a absolutely great performance by the kids. And yeah, that was a that was a good one, a good pick uh, to do. That was a, that was good. So yeah, I was uh, very impressed by that. Um, also, I did attend a uh, small webinar through MSBA, or not really a webinar, but a coffee and conversation they have. Um, and this one was pretty interesting because it uh, touched home. Um, a lot of it was about school budgets. And, um, you know, after listening to a lot of that conversation, it could be a lot worse. Um, there are a lot of school districts out there that are struggling. We are not the only one. And a lot of the school districts are significantly larger than ours. Um, I mean, as of right now, I believe it's uh, St. Paul Public Schools is needs to cut $170 million off of their budget. So, I mean, that's just one example. And there's, there's many that need to cut millions off of their budget. And that was very eye-opening <laughs> to me that, that a school district can come up with that kind of reduction. So anyhow, um, but uh, yeah, that's what I have to report rather than what we've been, the work that we've been doing here um, on the budget, on our own budget. So. Anybody else? I just appreciate everybody coming and like to see more people here more often, whether it's good input, whether you have something positive or whether you have something negative. All that's good input, you should be here and be involved. More parents involved, I'd like to see that. So please come to more. Absolutely. All right, we'll move on to Haley. Cole isn't here today. Um, girls basketball ended their season during playoff subsection finals with a loss against Brown, but they still overall had a really good season. So good job to the girls basketball team. And then softball practice has started. It's been going on for a few weeks, I believe. And I don't know much about that yet. <laughs> but then NHS had a blood drive on March 6th. That was pretty successful. There was um, 42 out of 56 slots filled and 38 units collected, which potentially saved 17 lives. And then also on March 6th, band had high school state large group and ended up um, getting an S rank, which is the highest you can get from the judges. Superior. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
And I don't believe uh, Cole sent anything, did he? Cole had communication with me today. Okay. And um, and I I have photos, but I they're they're too buried. I'm not going to dig for them. They're <laughs> in with my whole you know the whole March sure. board meeting. But um, um, we talked about. Um, he said he didn't have time to really write a report because of their activities. And so I said, hey, will you send me some pictures? And then he 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 texted back um, again and said, well, you know what, Mrs. Belshine, they're all on the school website. So please, please check out the school website, um, the, the baseball um, program, um, Facebook. Facebook. the Facebook page. Yeah, Facebook page for baseball. Um, um, I received an actual direct um, photo of them at the airport. They looked really sharp. They had brand new shirts and um, a really cool lion with sunglasses on, you know, really cool shades kind of thing. And uh, so please do um, check that out. Um, they, they've been to Magic Kingdom. They've been to, um, they've also been to the Epcot Center. Um, they, they also, of course, have been going to training. They've been practicing. And um, they have two scrimmages that they were playing. So the pictures out there, one of them that I had picked out was um, showing the big stadium that they actually, um, I believe it's called the World of Sports, um, is where they were actually doing their, their training. So what an opportunity for these 23 baseball players and the two coaches to be able to um, participate in. And again, there are people in this room that helped get them there. So thank you very much for that. Do have a live stream for their game tomorrow, and I did post on our Facebook page. So if anyone wants to watch their scrimmage game tomorrow, it's it's being streamed. Um, and what time is it? It's like noon or one, but it's on our Facebook page. The link is there, and so people can watch them play in Florida. That is really cool. And they, they'll be returning back home, but not until Easter Sunday morning. And so um we just are very, again, very happy, thankful that they're that they're actually being able to have this experience. And a shout out to the people that are down there chaperoning them, and a thank you to uh, to everybody that's you know helping them right now um, down there. That uh, I mean, we had somebody drive their own vehicle down with the equipment and everything, and go down correct. Yeah. Yes. So you know, just yes. a thank you to all the working parts that go along with that. Yeah. And you know, the coaches. And the coaches, the coaches are what make. The programs work and actually make these opportunities for our kids. Okay. Uh, other district employees. All right. Nope. Oh, you well, you're close. Well, no. Yeah, you just about lost it. All right. Sounds good, Mark. Go ahead. Um, the new electric bus is in St. Cloud. Um, it's at North Central. It's lettered. The uh, holdup is the short on text. You know, they have to get in the new buses to do setup and things in between working on people breakdowns. And, and so they have three electric buses there. Ours is going to be the third one because the other two are going to Minneapolis. It's going to be an expo on the night. So we should see our new bus sometime in the beginning of April here. All right. All right. Good news. <coughs> All right, moving on. We'll go to the consent agenda. And I believe, Kathy, that we can just take uh, items eight and nine all together um, through one motion, correct? Yes. Yeah, all right, could I get a motion for the consent agenda, please? So moved. Uh, motion by Member Smith. Can I get a second, please? Second. <coughs> second by Member Beck. Any discussion on that? I guess I should have asked if anybody wants anything pulled from that. Okay. All right. Hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. All right. We'll move on to the action items. Uh, looking for a motion for uh, number 10, approve March claims. Um, motion to approve March claims in the amount of $230,000. $166.37. Okay, I got a motion by Member Schroeder. Can I get a second, please? I'll second. Second by uh, Member Wilder. Uh, any discussion on that? 
Hearing none, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Member Schroeder? Aye. Wilder? Aye. Uh, Smith? Aye. Member Beck? Aye. Uh, Member Hanna? Aye. And I will vote aye as well. Motion passes unanimously. All right. Uh, item number 11, referendum contract, additional roof section. And with this motion, do we want to include uh, the, the dollar amount in there? All right. Can I get a motion for number 11? All right, um, make a motion to approve uh, the roofing contract awarded to McDowell Company in the amount of $129,700. Okay, I got a motion. Can I get a second on that, please? And second. Second by member Wilder. Any discussion on that? We make sure that we put in it as an alternate roof product in that motion. Okay. So. Yeah. That. Well, it's yeah. by McDowell. Well, but oh, I see. I see. But the, the number amount was right. itemized there. So right. that the should, dollars itemized. Yeah, the dollars there. So that should cover that. All right. Uh, any other discussion? All right. Hearing none, uh, we'll do a roll call vote again. Uh, mem uh, member Hannah? Aye. Beck? Aye. Uh, member Smith? Aye. Member Wilder? Aye. And member Schroeder? Aye. And I will vote aye as well. Motion passes unanimously. All right. <clears throat> Get a motion for number 12, re re resolution of non renewals for all out of field teachers, um, which is a required procedure. Uh, items A through F. So moved. Motion by member Smith. Can I get a second? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Oh, do I need to read it? It's a resolution. Oh, sorry. No, that's Yeah, right. it says resolution right there. I should have known that. So. Which parts do we need? All of it? I would say there? yes. It's pretty short. We start it there. Yep. For all right. Therefore, be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District 333 Ogilvy as follows. Pursuant to Minnesota statute section 122A.40 subdivision 5, the teaching contracts of the following out of field teachers employed by the independent school district number 333 are, her are hereby terminated at the close of the current 2023-2024 school year, effective June 28th, 2024. Uh, we have um, Nicole Schwartzbauer. Amanda Fredette, Dave Nichols, Tanner Haglin, uh, Stephanie Bakius. Bakius, and Jeremy Tweet. Uh, be it further resolved that written notice be delivered to said teachers regarding non renewal of the contracts as provided by law. The board has reviewed and hereby approves the letter be sent to the teachers. Okay, I got a motion on the floor by Member Smith. Can I get a second, please? Second. Second by Member Schroeder. Schroeder. All right, any discussion on that? Or, Kathy, anything you need to add to that? No, no. The, the letters will be hand delivered. Okay. okay. Um, all right, no other discussion. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, uh, item 13, resolution of non-renewals non for all tier one and tier two teachers, which is also a required procedure, items uh, A through F. Um, want me to read them? Read it? Or yeah, you, can. Can. you can. Read it. Whereas due to six teachers teaching with the tier one and tier two contracts during this, this current 23-24 school year, therefore it be resolved by school by the School Board of Independent School District number 333 Ogilvy as follows, pursuant to Minnesota statute section 122A.40 subdivision five, the teaching contracts of the following tier one and tier two teachers employed by independent school district number 333 are hereby terminated at the close of the current 23-24 school year, effective June 28, 24. Laura Christ, Elizabeth Altendorf, April Leggett, Colton Schustad, 
uh, Dale Rittenauer and Taylor Stralo. Be it further resolved that written notice be delivered to said teachers regarding non-renewal of the contract as provided by law. The board has reviewed and hereby <coughs> approves the letter to be sent to the teachers. Motion by member Canings. Can I get a second, please? I'll second. Okay, and a second by member Smith. Any discussion on this? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. All right. Item number 14. What we're going to do here is uh, it is the budget reductions for 24 25. We are going to go through each one of these budget reductions. Um, let me see here. All right, so for items one through nine, reduction items number one through nine, we are going to do a motion and a second for each item. And it is going to be a roll call vote when it is done, but we are gonna do a motion, a second, discussion on it. And then it is going to be a roll call vote. During the roll call vote, you, um, we are going to either say yes to approving the reduction, no to not approving the reduction, or if there's um, in, uh, a reason that you would need to abstain from that reduction, um, you would have the opportunity to do that as well. So um, we'll just get started here. Um, you gonna jot? I can jot these now. She's gone. All ready to. Two. Okay, number one, uh, can I get a motion for reduction number one? So move. Okay, motion by member Smith. Can I get a second on that, please? Second. Second by member Schroeder. Discussion. And this pertains to the transition of sixth grade to middle level instruction. Do you believe, Nate, that we've researched all of our possible ways to get around doing this well i will i should have added this earlier but uh, none of these reductions are going to come easy and you know it's been a, that, a I... lot of work by the administration but this is the recommendation by the administrative administration to us and with collaboration with them okay. so i mean I don't know if we need to explain any more as to what's going on with that um, and how that's going to look, Ryan, if there's anything that we need to discuss here at the table on how that might look um, for the kids. If you have any questions, we certainly will answer the questions. If you, our sixth graders would um, get their instruction from our high school teachers. Okay. And they are licensed teachers in grades five through eight or grades five through 12. Okay. Any other discussion on number one? Schroeder or Wilder, you got any questions on this? All right, hearing no other discussion on reduction one, uh, we'll go roll call vote. Member Schroeder. Yes. Uh, Member Wilder. Yes. Member Smith. Yes. Member Hannah. Yes. And Member Beck. Yes. And I will vote yes as well. Okay. Reduction number two is uh, 
the one section of fifth grade and the one section of third grade and uh, combining those. Can I get a motion on that, please? So moved. Okay, motion by Member Smith. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Member, uh, by, second by Member Wilder. All right, discussion on that. Yeah, I got, I got something. Um, I mean, there's been a lot of questions about this. Ryan, um, in the information you sent us earlier today, you had it broke down exactly how many hours a day that these kids would be with one teacher. Can you go over that for the crowd just so you guys are aware of the information that we have? Yep. So uh, we would have one permanent teacher in both third grade and one permanent teacher in fifth grade. And then we would have another elementary teacher who would teach support in those core classes, um, mainly being reading and math. Um, we also have a program called What I Need Time, and What I Need Time is when all of our students get pull-out services. Um, so our special ed services, our title services are all happening at that time. Um, and it, it has, we have less people in the class because of those services. Um, so in total, our third grade um, class would have an hour and 20 minutes where all 30 kids would be in the same class together. In our fifth grade class, I believe it was an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, and of that, 50 of those minutes is instructional time, where we have all 33 students in the same class together. Um, you know, the other hours are either supported by that other elementary teacher or by the wind time um, or specialist time, lunch, recess, those types of things. All right, um, and then I guess I got one other question. Um, what are your thoughts about how you're gonna handle discipline or how the teachers are gonna be expected to handle that? I know that was a question that got brought up. Mm -hmm. So it, it's tough to give a, an overarching you know, comment on that. We treat each discipline thing um, individually, you know, we have higher behavioral needs in, in both classes. Um, one of them is very specific to competitive areas. Um, so that's a lot of pre-teaching in those areas. And um, FIED is one of those areas where the kids would be separated between the two classes. Um, as, as far as our third grade, um, it's not as targeted with, the, um, not as targeted as it's this area where they would need additional support. Um, our additional licensed teacher is in that classroom more than the fifth grade classroom. Um, so for example, our, our breakfast time and morning meeting time, that would, it would be a, a time when our third grade would be separated rather than our fifth grade. Okay. That's all I got. How are you guys? Okay. Anybody else have any discussion on number two? <coughs> All right. Hearing none, we'll roll call vote. <coughs> Member Smith? Yes. Member Wilder? Yes. Member Schroeder? Yes. Member Hannah? No. Member Beck? And I will vote no as well. Motion passes. <clears throat> All right. Reduction number three. Removing one district uh, special ed position. Can I get a motion on that, please? So moved. Motion by Member Smith. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Member Beck. Discussion on that. I just want to, um, the only thing I'm going to ask is just clear up the caseload averages and how that's going to look. 
Do you want me to repeat those? The, the just, case loads? Oh, I suppose we did talk about that. <coughs> well, you just want to just announce what that's looking like. Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, just making sure that our case loads are announced as to, you know, so, so these here on the sheet are as we see them. That is our caseload then for, that's our proposed caseload. The information that I gave in the earlier meeting, yes. Okay. I, I believe the elementary caseload is, is actually lower than that. It's just under 15 would be the average. The elementary would be lower? Yeah. I can share those again if you'd like. Nope. Okay. <coughs> okay. Any other discussion or anything needed out of that? All right, hearing none, one, what's up? One question. Go ahead. Ryan, can you elaborate on, or just make it a point that it's not going to change any of our programming? Yep. Our programming yep. does not change. Yep. So our, our program would, would stay the same. Uh, we have one classroom that has much higher needs, um, students who are in there an overwhelming majority of the day. Um, so that program will still exist. We'll still go through the same curriculum with those students. Um, and then our other case loads, um, they're going to increase about two students. Um, so, so with that, you know, the two students could receive services that are maybe 30 minutes a day, some of them receive services for about an hour and a half a day. And, and those services are typically in a small group setting. Thank you. So it's not cutting programming at all. <clears throat> okay, any other discussion? All right, uh, Member Hannah. Yes. Member Beck. Yes. Member Smith. No. Member Wilder. Yes. Member Schroeder. Yes. I will vote no as well. <clears throat> Motion passes. Number four. Uh, the halftime high school vocal music position. Get a motion on that, please. <coughs> motion by Member Smith. Can I get a second, please? A second. Second by Member Wilder. Discussion. If there is any. Okay. Hearing none. Uh, Member Wilder. Yes. Member Schroeder? Yes. Member Hanna? Yes. Member Beck? Yes. Member Smith? Yes. And I will vote yes as well. Motion passes. All right, uh, reduction number five. The 1.0 uh, math and business position. <coughs> All right, can I get a motion on that, please? So moved. All right, mem mem Member Smith, get a second, please. Second. Second by Member Beck. Discussion. That's just reappropriating teachers yep. as needed. Okay. Uh, Member Smith? Yes. Member Schroeder? Yes. Member Wilder? Yes. Member Beck? Yes. And Member Hanna? Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. <coughs> All right. Number six. Um, point four five. Uh, high school English teacher. Can I get a motion on that, please? So moved. Second. Motion by Member uh, Smith and a second by Member Hanna. Discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, Member Hanna? 
Yes. Member Beck. Yes. Member Smith. Yes. Member Wilder. Yes. Member uh, Schroeder. Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. Number seven, one Title One paraeducator. Can I get a motion on that, please? So moved. Motion by Member Smith. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Member Beck. Discussion. All right, Member Beck. Yes. Member Smith. Yes. Member Wilder. Yes. Member Schroeder. Abstain. Member Hannah? Yes. I will vote no. <coughs> yep. Okay. Number eight, the attendance position. Oh, sorry. Oh, yep, that uh, the motion passes. Sorry, you distracted me. All right, uh, number eight, the attendance position. The motion on that, please. So moved. Motion by Member Smith. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Member Hanna. Discussion. Hearing none, Member Schroeder? Yes. Member Wilder? Yes. Member Smith? Yes. Member Beck? Yep. Yes, sorry. Member Hannah? Yes. And I'll vote yes as well. Motion passes. And reduction number nine. I, you just want to take it. Yep. I'll make a motion that we table that um, until a later meeting. Do we want to say a date on the meeting or till our July business meeting? Or how do you want to do that? determined, I guess, because we don't know if we'll actually do it in July is the problem. Well, we can bring it up as an agenda yeah, item. If we want. Want. Yeah. When's our July business meeting? Well, we can just say that. It's the, always the fourth, fourth Monday of the month. Yeah. Uh, July 22nd. Okay. Motion by Member Smith to table the uh, reduction nine till the July 22nd meeting. Can I get a second on that, please? Second. Second by Member Wilder. Any, dis any further discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor say what? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. <laughs> all right. So that's, that's all we need to do for that, correct, Kathy? That is correct. Yep, because the bottom was just yep. ideas. We went over. No action on that. Okay. <clears throat> Item 15, ACT testing procedure, April 9th, 2024. Get a motion on that, please. So moved. All right, Member Smith, can I get a second on that? Can I get a second? Wilder's got it. All right, discussion on that, Kathy, or... So, so with the ACT in the past, what we've always done is when we have our juniors taking the test, the 18 or 19 juniors that are taking the test, then when they are done, I mean, it's usually around 115 that they're done with the test. They're exhausted. We let them go. Yeah. And we so that's just, thing last yes, we do that we've done year, it so. every year for several years in a row. So, yep. so we're just getting, um, trying to get permission for a lot of them to do that again to leave when they're done. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on that? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, number 16. Did we get them? I don't think 
that we did. But first, anyway, uh, can I get a motion for enrollment numbers um, as presented? Enrollment numbers. Oh. Uh, well, yeah. If, I guess you can well, sure I that. asked for a motion, so I oh, need that okay. first. And we right. can yeah, just fine. do that. Well, they're as yeah. presented. So can I get a motion yeah. on the enrollment numbers, please? So, all right. Member Smith, can I get a second, please? Second. Second by Member Schroeder. Discussion. So what are they? One student less in <laughs> kindergarten. Oh, excuse me. Um, yes, one less student in kindergarten. All the rest of them were the same. So 264 students in grades K through six. And we have um, no change in high school. They're at 223 for a total of um, 487 students. Oh, my apologies. We, we gained one, one senior. And that's why they stayed um, 487. We gained a, a senior and we um, lost a kindergartner. It doesn't make sense. 487. Were we like 472 or three last month? No. No, we were at in April. Excuse me. Um, oh, no, Kathy, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm we sorry. Were, we were hoping it was up to 487. Um, I don't think I don't think we're there. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> May I? You didn't send it to us, so I can't even. I, I, well, it's because I'm so sorry. I'm looking at um, 2023 instead of 2024. Okay. Um, if we could please maybe go back to it. Just <coughs> skip over it for a minute. Well, we have a motion and a second. Do you want us to pull it off for the time being? I mean, we just need to, to, to discuss the numbers, but. Oh, sure. I can, I, well, here. Are you able to pull up the number? Yes, I, I will be able to. Perfect. You can start doing that. No, we had one no. yesterday. No, it, it would actually go in and stuff in the afternoon <laughs> because it would be a time. So then we have a once a couple of years and we'll have to get help. You have to, you either have to, um, you either have to redo it. You need to, you need to approve it that way and then you have to have uh, redo it again. Which we didn't have any of that. No. Oh, yes. Okay. The only one that was close was. But that goes to the bottom. Yes, yeah, so that goes to the yes. <laughs> any of the yes. Well, that goes to the more to the Jordan. All right. Do we, no, please. Perfect. Do we have a Kathy or? No. Deanna has it. Deanna, yep. She's the one that sends it to me. That sounds she, good. She has the information. Do you want me to read it? Yes. Um, no, the share the totals yeah. for us, please. As of yesterday, we have two more kindergartners, one less first grader, one less second grader, one less third grader, fourth is the same, fifth is the same, and sixth is the same. So the total is 245. We're down one. Um, we lost three, but gained two along the way. And then seventh grade 
stays the same at 33. Eighth stays the same at 39. Um, ninth, we lost one, so we're down to 38. Tenth stayed at 37. Eleventh stayed at 36. And twelfth stayed the same at 37. So that puts it at 220. So down to 221 last month. And our total numbers is 465 this month. It was 467 last month. All right. Thank you, Deanna. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Hearing that information. All right. Uh, any other discussion on that? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right. Uh, item number 17, school calendar for 24-25 school year. Can I get a motion on that, please? So Motion by Member Schroeder. Can I get a second? I'll second. Second by Member Wilder. Any discussion on that? I had shared that with um, full staff and with um, board members as, as well. And I did not um, receive any um, any you know negative feedback um, with the calendar. It's, you know, we've got that down to a really good process. Um, Mrs. Davis, Mr. Koenigs, and I did review it together also after um, I had done the numbers and and um, we, we felt that it was um, a really good calendar for the upcoming school year. Very similar to this year's. Okay. I know also I see it's not on here and maybe it's irrelevant to this, but the musical. Does the musical have anything to do with this particular calendar? No. Okay, then I won't even comment on it. All right. Um, all right. Any further discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Number 18, policy number 612.1, development of parent and family engagement policies for Title I programs. Can I get a motion on that, please? So moved. Motion by Member Smith. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Member Schroeder. Discussion. This one accompanies our Title I funding. And so again, with the new system, with the, the grant system, with MDE, um, we needed to make sure that this was brought before you. Um, it has not changed at all since um, 2016. So there is no new language. It's just, again, that um, we need to be aware that we have our strong um, Title I program and that along with that Title I program is parent and family engagement. And then we're also responsible for, um, you know, sharing what we do for that family engagement with our Title I program. And that's written, it's, it's um, stated in the policy. All right. Hearing that, any other further discussion on that? Yes. Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. All right. Number 19, donations, uh, Mystic Riders, Mystic Snowmobile Riders, $2,500 uh, baseball forward to training, Ogilvy Raceway for the Girls Basketball Conference Champion Sweatshirts, Ogilvy Lions, um, $2,065, uh, 1,000 of that goes to Ogilvy Early Childhood, 265 of that is the Gary Baker Funeral Food, and $800 Firearm Safety Training. Uh, program. And we have an addition uh, to the agenda to just the uh, class of 1990 $450 donation to the wrestling team in memory of Gary Baker. Can I get a motion on that, please? So moved. Motion by Member Wilder. Can I get a second? Second. Second by Member Schroeder. Any discussion on that? Chair Canings, excuse me, I wanted to um, share with you 
what um, our girls received from the Ogilvy Raceway. And so this is the, the sweatshirt that the, the girls were presented with. Um, this is the same um, front that they had on their t-shirts as well. And then on the back, they have the, the girls' names that were our starters and on our, our varsity JV um, team. Awesome. And so very, very really nice. Um, you know, and there, was, there, there wasn't any money associated with it, and that's why I thought that we'd have a little show and tell tonight so you can actually see what the girls received. Oh, that's very awesome. Okay. And again, thank you to everybody that uh, did donate um, here. It was great that you guys do that for us. So, um, all right. Any other further discussion on any of these? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. We have uh, the action item, uh, the new 20. Um, Senior Oasis Day, April 24th, 2024. Okay. Uh, can I get a motion on that, please? So moved. Motion by Member Smith. Can I get a second? Second, second by Member Schroeder. Discussion. Okay. Senior Oasis Day. Typically, it's on the last week of school. The seniors, they go off and they do, um, they have an event that they do together. Um, Typically, when they're done, because it's the last week of school, when they're done, they go home. This year, they actually want to change it to be in April. So they're going to do it on one of the MCA testing days, which is good because then it gets more people out of the building that are not testing. So there's a lot less disruption and um, supervision of like hallways and bathrooms and stuff that you have to do. But they want to do it in April. They're going to do their senior ISIS. They just want permission because it is technically still a school day if they can be done when they're done. And if I could please add um, that the conversation with the senior class advisor um, was in my office today. And because this is being um, taken out of the senior week, then we would look at the senior week and the students would possibly need to have another instructional day. Um, during that week um, because of the timing of the two. And that's um, that, again, is because of the minimum number of hours that we need to have instruction um, for our school district. And, and that's, uh, we it's always our senior class that we have to look at most closely because they're the ones that are closest to that, that minimum. So um, again, I completely support this. This is going to be hosted um, over at the St. Mary's Parish Center in Mora for the kids and that all of the arrangements have been made, but we will be looking at those numbers for instructional hours during that last week. And, and typically the week before the last week is when they do CPR training. And I think they're gonna be doing CPR training now during that last week. So the students will be here. All right. Any further? If there's no other further discussion, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. Non-action items. Uh, we got to renumber these because number the pop-up pantry must have been. We we just uh, took out the twenty. Yeah. So you just you put in a new number twenty. I know, but it says delete existing non-action item number twenty. So are we deleting? Yeah. Yes, you're deleting that because we put in the new 20, which was the... Um, the I took it as you were removing the entire non-action item. You're just renumbering? Just renumbering, put 21 as the pop-up. No, okay, no. I thought it was... No, well, the it 20... Saves. Delete I, existing non-action item 20. No, so you, was, you need to have the new 20 would be part of action items. Correct. And so, and the the... Old to are the non action. It's fine. I understand. Is, we is need to renumber out. it. I got it. No, there is no renumbering. 120 is taking the place of the other 20, so now you're on to 21. Okay. And it got tricky because one was an action item and one is a not, is not an action item. It didn't happen. We're not going to discuss it. <laughs> so. So we don't need to have number 20 on the non-action items. Okay. So we're on to 21. Yes, we are. 
which is the alumni award recipient nomination. That's, okay, that's what I said. All right, sounds good. Uh, yep, item number twenty-one: alumni award recipient nominations. Uh, go ahead. This is this is um, a, a, an ask um, if you have any past um, Ogilvy um, graduates that you would like to honor. Please, please um, nominate them. And the nominations um, are out on our Facebook pages. And we would really appreciate um, that your voices are heard and recognizing a past graduate of Ogilvy um, Public Schools. So um, if you're so inclined, please do that. Um, we, we do have a March 31st um, end date on that, but it, we will be extending it in the first week of April. So, um, so please do um, nominate someone that would be so deserving of this. And how that works is they also then um, present the graduating class with, um, with the speech, the recognition at graduation. It's, it's, a, it's a real honor, and there are so many people that we should be recognizing as past graduates. So thank you. Okay. All right, move on to other. Does anybody have another? Could I give two kind of shout outs? Absolutely. Okay. One is to um, Lorelei and David um, for um, during showcase for um, having that fun activity for us in the uh, the staff lounge. And it was um, the water talk, you know, the, the actual water drinks, and they um, had set up a, a water talk bar. Um, and so we were able to make um, different drinks and, and have that healthy water um, being offered to all of our staff members. And it was, it was super fun. And um, I know that David really was, um, was Kind of a champion of it, and I believe that we have a video of him actually teaching people how to do um, uh, to make their own fancy water. Um, the other is that again, to I neglected to uh, mention footless footless, and if you um, were a member um, of our community that was able to join that musical, once again. It was just an absolutely fabulous show. And those kinds of events are what we um, as administrators, what I hear so much feedback on is, oh my gosh, for such a small school district, look at the talent and the number of kids that were up there on that stage. And so I know that um, my family, um, including my mother-in-law, really, really enjoyed um, Footloose. And I hope that you were able to participate in watching that as well. So thank you for letting me share that. Yep. Does anybody else have an other? I do have one other. Um, I don't believe we do, and nothing's been talked about it, but uh, we canceled two days of school. We've made up one. Do we need to make up the other one? need to be thinking about whether that's going to be something that's going to happen, and it, uh, that no decision needs to be made tonight, and, and I honestly don't want us to be making a decision tonight because we still have um, two months of school left. So let's see what happens during the next two months. The next um, makeup date that's um, on our school calendar is May 30, May 31st, I believe. Do we have enough instructional days built in to where we wouldn't have to make that up? Or you know what I'm getting at? It goes yeah. by minutes. It goes, yeah. minutes. It goes by the hours. Yeah. Um, by those hours. And again, it's um, it we can't we do have enough. But we have to watch what happens with our right. seniors during that last week. Everybody else, all of our all of our kids, um, they have plenty of hours from our you know elementary um, up through our high school. But it is garnered by that minimum eleven hundred twenty hours. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, if nobody has any uh, other other, we will move on to item number 23. Can I get a motion to adjourn, please? Motion to adjourn at 8.04. Motion by Member Smith. Can I get a second? No, second. Second by Member Wilder. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is adjourned.